everybody, Jason Wright with another episode of ThreatWise TV. Thanks for tuning in today. And today we are talking about a couple of new releases from a couple of different product families that are going to allow them to work together better. So I'm talking about our Cisco Secure Workload and our Cisco Secure Firewall. They're actually going to have a, a couple of releases each that are going to let them be working together. And the problem is that we've been seeing applications come out there so quickly that our network security and our security people are not able to keep up with the changes there. So we're trying to get the network and workload to work together for a network working together, the big W there, uh, type of, of, of benefit and enablement for our customers to basically enable uh, SecOps to work at DevOps speed, if you will. So Tim Garner, uh, one of our technical marketing marketing engineers, uh, along with Alex Teneshev, another technical marketing engineer. Guys, thank you for being here. But Tim, did I get all of that right? That was a heck of a mouthful. Uh, any any changes there or or uh, or expansions? So thank you for having me back on the show again, Jason. And yes, you got it absolutely right. The uh, the speed at which applications are deployed and the changes that happen to those applications and the fact that the network needs to react to those quick changes has brought us to this point in time where we're looking to integrate both our secure workload product, formerly known as Titration, deeper with the uh, secure firewall so that we can have a unified policy that is deployed in two places that is dynamically updating and reacting to the changes in the applications that a customer has deployed. Well, I love seeing our, our products working together. This is a long time mantra of the show and, and, and the demonstrations that we have out there together is uh, showing these technologies, getting more and more integrated so that they're sharing information about events and policy and users and, and the threats that they're seeing. And so show me what it's looking like now that we're seeing uh, these two products talk to each other in a better way. So what we have is a dynamic policy that is pushed from secure workload to the FMC Management Center, which will then push it down to the FTD. So you have a unique policy or a unified policy, I should say, that is being dynamically enforced and kept in sync between both your workloads and your firewalls in the network, really bringing that unified segmentation to reality. The outcome as a customer and someone that deploys in your, this in your network is that you will get protection for both east to west traffic and north-south traffic through those different enforcement points without having to manage those policies and configurations individually on each device that you are trying to enforce those rules on. So That's certainly a, a huge task for firewall administrators. And as the apps change and, and the environment changes in which they're running, uh, I can imagine just how difficult it would be to keep up with, with all of that constant churn. So now we're just automating a lot of that process, letting secure workload map out what's going on and tell the firewall, here's how to create your policies and maintain, uh, maintain a secure environment here. Is that right? Totally correct. What you're really allowing is the NetOps team to start moving at the speed of DevOps. And it really is true that applications change incredibly quickly. Secure Workload is dynamically reevaluating the state of the entire environment every 60 seconds to make sure that policy is kept in sync. And it removes the burden of automating, keeping those policies in sync from the NetOps team so that they can focus on the higher order problems such as what should my zero trust policies look like. So I'd love to take you for a demonstration of this, Jason. And what you can see here is the Secure Workload interface. And I'm showing you a policy that has been discovered by Secure Workload, visualized in our new Policy Explorer. We can see how different components of the portal application are reliant on a shared database. The policy in terms of who should be speaking to whom has automatically been generated. And we've also been able to test and simulate the effect of that policy to make sure it won't break anything when we enforce it. What we're going to do now is look in our demo environment and see that because policy has not been enforced yet, non-compliant traffic can be generated and connections between workloads that shouldn't be allowed are able to happen. This is typically the state of many environments that don't have any east to west segmentation enabled. I can access from a production server to a non-production server. And further, I can access a production workload from a developer's machine. Both the east to west and north to south flow in this case 
really shouldn't be happening according to our security policy. So what we are going to do to fix this is enforce the policy, but we want to make sure that the policy is enforced both on the workload and the firewalls in my environment. Using the new policy impact tool, I will be able to see which machines will be affected by this change in my segmentation rules. And I get full visibility into every single action I will be taking. And I will have confidence to know that I'm not going to break any applications as I implement these security policies. Yeah, I love the way it's showing you what's going to happen if you do this moving forward. Exactly. It takes away a huge amount of the stress that used to be there as you make changes. Now what we can see is the policies that I had discovered in Secure Workload have been synchronized to my secure firewalls via the Firepower Management Center. We're able to inspect the policies that have been deployed to the FMC. And as you can see, they have been generated automatically by Secure Workload. I didn't have to write any of these by hand. These policies are rendered as pre-filter rules, so they're very dynamic and they can be updated quickly as the applications change. The outcome that you can see is that the traffic that shouldn't be allowed starts to get blocked. But this block is actually happening on an FTD rather than a workload enforcing that block. So we have that unified policy enforcement that is synchronized between the two different environments. And as you can see, the lateral movement is now enforced and disallowed by the policy, both between the production workload to the non-production workload. And the same should be true for the developer trying to access the production workload. Excellent. So policy automatically mapped out by Tetration or by Secure Workload, formerly known as Tetration, sent over to the Firepower Management Center, uh, now known as Cisco Secure Firewall, and uh, implemented here and, and uh, giving us a nice stable level of bifurcation and demarcation between uh, things that shouldn't be talking to each other, Northwest and North South and East West. Northwest sounds like a uh, the baby of a famous rapper. <laughs> um, That's going to be a whole new marketing term. Like uh, yeah. we have Northwest <laughs> traffic protection. <laughs> you coined it right here, Jason. You heard so, it first. I'll <laughs> so then, obviously, what we need to be able to deal with is not just pushing the policy once, but dynamic changes to applications. So what we have just done in the background is scaled out our application to have two times as many application servers. And what we should expect to see is that the rules that are being enforced on the firepower are synchronized and updated based on that change in the application. So we can take a look at the fact that yes, a deployment is going to happen automatically pushed by secure workload. This is gonna be updating the rules that we see inside the FMC. And by looking at these rules, we'll be able to see the fact that the mapping of the IP addresses of the new dynamic workloads has automatically been updated without any interaction from the NetOps team. That truly brings the NetOps team to DevOps speed where the network is reacting dynamically to changes in the application. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, I, I love seeing that the automation occur here. And again, like I said, the, the policy preview where you can see the results of those policies before you push them in. But now we're just copying in things that are being replicated. We're just kind of copy pasting in there and it looks like it's moving real smooth. Yeah, it's really smooth. And I think it genuinely improves both the security posture of the environment and the day-to-day the -day responsibility of the folks that are in charge of those security rules. Well, not just uh, making better security, but making better security easier for everyone involved out there. So that's fantastic demo, Tim. Tim thank you so much for uh, for showing this all to us here. But uh, I want to shift gears a little bit because there's a lot of other features and functionalities that are coming out that we want to talk about very quickly. So uh, I'm going to shift over to Alex Tadashev right now. Alex, tell us a little bit about some of the other functionality and features and uh, that are coming out in this release. Well, Jason, okay, new in 7.0, one of the most exciting features is a feature that allows us to now log all those events to the FMC, which in the past were somewhat of a challenge with the storage. So what we can do now is there's an integration. It's called Security Analytics and Logging, or SAL, and it's an integration with Security Network Analytics, which is formerly StealthWatch. 
So what you can do is there's a light version and, and we call a heavy version. So the light version is just a virtual version of the StealthWatch product that you can install and then send those logs in the firewall straight over to StealthWatch. But it's not just going to StealthWatch, you're integrated in such a way that when you're viewing those on the FMC, you still view them on the FMC, but they're stored on this uh, StealthWatch system, which stores multiple times more events than we had before. So it really solves the problem that's been going on for quite a while where people just were, just couldn't log all these connection events, especially to to um, the the FMC. So it really yeah, helps to export them off somewhere to, to some third right. party right. Uh, place, right? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's pretty, pretty big. There's some other features uh, on the FMC itself. Uh, the unified event viewer, which lets you see all the events in one place now, even in real time. Um, Snort 3.0, we're pretty excited about that. So this is a, a huge change in 7.0. We now have Snort 3.0 releasing. It's available. It's actually going to default to, for new installations, it'll default to 3.0. You can still go back to Snort 2 if you want. But uh, that's that's huge as far as the capabilities offered by uh, the multi-threading and uh, reduced memory footprint, lots of features built into Snort 3.0 to really help us move forward to the future with a much stronger platform. Uh, one of the most exciting ones too is uh, it's called TLS Server Identity. So I want to demonstrate that real quickly, what that looks like. I've heard about this. I've heard that uh, a lot of people are having problems with TLS 1.3. Uh, it's breaking their layer seven decryption um, uh, policies where they're trying to decrypt and look at things. Uh, what is it that's that's causing that problem? And and it sounds like we're, we've got a good solution for it. Okay, the problem was, and still is, that uh, with TLS 1.2 and previous, when a server and a client make a negotiation for the secure connection, the server certificate is in the clear. So a firewall can look into that server certificate, can look at the the name on that certificate and make a decision, a uh, policy decision for an application, for instance, or a URL. The problem with TLS 1.3 is that that's encrypted. So for most cases, the only way you can get access to that is to decrypt the entire connection. Now that can cause some problems with compliance, especially if you wanna to try to decrypt banking sites or privacy for healthcare sites, something like that. So there's lots of traffic we just can't decrypt. Plus there's a lot of overhead for that, obviously. So. With the TLS 1.2 identity feature, or 1.3, I should say, um, that allows us to basically make a, make a second connection to that server with TLS 1.2. Look at that certificate. Now we can make an authoritative decision for application identification. And on the firewall, the demo is pretty simple. The firewall is very easy. It's kind of uh, transparent to the user. It was one setting on the advanced policy down here called TLS server identity, and it's just a checkbox. So once you check that box, you're covered. There's uh, nothing else to do. Your policies just work with TLS 1.3. Oh, wow, we're here. That's a very simplistic way to, to fix a very complicated problem, isn't it? It is. It is. And it's only available at Cisco. No one else has that. If you want to do that on any, any other firewall, you have to actually decrypt that entire connection. We know that that can be, as we mentioned, some issues with that. Problematic and, and even illegal, for sure. Absolutely. While we're here, I just want to mention another huge feature. Notice at the bottom, I have the SecureX ribbon. So. You can now integrate SecureX directly with the FMC, go right to SecureX and uh, look at your events and view SecureX events on the FMC as well. The last thing, just real quick, we have a new health monitoring dashboard with this feature. I just like it because it's real pretty. So there's some nice new widgets on here for the FMC. One of the coolest ones is, is this event capacity widget that basically tells you, again, if you're not using Secure Analytics and logging, you're just logging on the FMC, what your logging capacity looks like. This is just one of those cool features that uh, really helps understand how things are going on the FMC. Excellent. Well, thanks, Alex, for that overview. I mean, like I said, I heard several things there. I heard Snort 3.0. I heard uh, new secure analytics and logging, which is basically putting the power of StealthWatch into your logs and being able to analyze from that perspective and offload uh, your, your higher event capacity storage. Uh, I heard about uh, TLS 1.3, which seems like a super simple fix with a checkbox. So it you know, doesn't get much more simple than that. Uh, very unique to Cisco and what we're bringing to the table. But like I said, putting all of this stuff together and allowing our technologies to work together, uh, like we showed earlier, is, is really the crux of what we're bringing to the table here and creating this network version of uh, network security and workload security working together. So everybody, if you want to learn a little bit more, we can always send you over to cisco.com slash go slash secure firewall.
And of course, if you want to learn uh, a little bit more about other technologies or and dive a little bit deeper into our portfolio and some of the other new features, we are really cranking up the uh, processing of ThreatWise TV episodes. So head over to our landing page at cisco.com slash go slash ThreatWise, and you'll see a whole host of new episodes that are talking about all of our new features and what we've been launching and how we're keeping busy out here. So everybody, thanks for tuning in to this edition of ThreatWise TV.